Welcome to the New Grounds Podcast. Today's episode hosted by Voices by Corey. Welcome, everyone, to the latest episode of the New Grounds Podcast. I am Voices by Corey. It's been a minute since I popped on the show. Uh, our last episode, we had Toltro, and we had Shao hosting his very first episode of NGP, and that was actually really fun. I got to listen into that. Uh, but it feels good to be back. Um, it feels like I've been away from the show for, like, two months or something like that, which may not seem like a long time, but... Today, we have brought back uh, my co-host from the Community Nights, which um, I've been slacking on and still haven't posted, and I'm going to be working on that after the episode tonight. <laughs> I got Mr. <laughs> Bull Boy here with me. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing very well. How about you, Corey? Oh, I'm doing fantastic. You know me. And we got <laughs> two very special guests tonight. We have It's Red Queen, who's here to... What's up, guys? We, we have... We have Red here to make a special announcement with us tonight. But before we get to that, we want to introduce our other guest. It is Mr. Wes Makowski, who is the orchestrator orchestrator of the Toy Story 2 collab, which we're going to be talking about tonight. So, Wes, go ahead. Say what's up, man. What's up, guys? <laughs> um, <laughs> so, I was going to say, uh, if I sound a little slow, uh, bear with me. Uh, I'm nervous. But I'm also very, very excited, <laughs> and uh, yeah. Are they gonna say very, very high? Yeah. <laughs> very, very high. <laughs> no. well, well, just know, just know, if you are extremely nervous, Ben has already pissed his pants. So yeah. we've already got that aspect of the show out of the way. <laughs> so you're okay. You can just relax. No one's gonna be peeing themselves the rest of the night. So you're okay. Yeah. If you do though, you gotta make sure you mail it to Corey. He kind of threatens me um, in the DMs. <laughs> It's very true. I was uh, yelling at him to get your ass in the in the server. We're about to start. Where the hell are you? But of course, he's just like me and would rather spend time with his family, you know, knowing his priorities and whatnot. So uh, yeah, <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, it's gonna be a fun night here tonight on NGP. Uh, like I said, we're gonna be talking about the Toy Story Two collab, which is absolutely phenomenal. And I'm glad that we got Wes on to talk about this because what he's doing with this collab is extraordinary and something we haven't really seen in quite some time. There's a lot of Newgrounds uh, folks uh, that are a part of the project, um, including myself, uh, a couple other voice actors and animators uh, that you definitely know. So it, it's going to be really cool. Yeah. But of course. I really I really appreciate before... you having me on here. Sorry, <laughs> just interrupted yeah. you there. No, no, you're good. No, 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 you're good, man. And like, I, trust me, I'm glad that you even wanted to come on here. So yeah, we're. I, I'm looking forward to talking about the collab tonight and just diving more into it about why you wanted to do it and all that good stuff. But before we even do that, we've been teasing something for uh, quite a bit the last couple weeks, uh, especially in the community night that uh, Ben and I did. And uh, it deals with our good friend, uh, it's Red Queen. Um, Hi! <laughs> we were uh, approached... Quite some time ago, it was like at least a month or two ago, about this little concept um, that we instantly fell in love with. Zen, and Josh, and myself, like this is something that could ultimately change how people interact with NGP and basically bring about this new culture and aspect to the show. And I am all for it, and I think it's going to be freaking awesome. Just the stuff that we've already talked about and how we are going to incorporate this new culture of NGP is freaking awesome. And Red has been a part of just the whole organization and has been super helpful and coming up with all this cool stuff to make sure that when we launch it tonight, it's going to be full-fledged and you guys can interact and, you know, make it, you know, blow this thing up and make it become a part of Newgrounds. So, without further ado, as you guys know, there are certain bots on Newgrounds that handle everything. And the one that, the one robot that everybody mostly knows goes by Peabot. You know, you got 
Peabots Daily, top five picks, all that good stuff. Well, Red thought it would be a good idea if we incorporated our own robot to NGP. So tonight we are announcing that the Newgrounds podcast has a mascot who goes by the name of Podchan. So, Red, go ahead, drop the illustration and announcements, and let's introduce the Newgrounds podcast community to Podchan. Right on it, sir. (laughs) And as you guys get to take... uh, Some of you already know about Podchan, but this will be the first time you guys have ever... This may be the first time that you guys have ever seen Podchan. And when Red brought this concept to us, we fell in love right away. And there's Podchan right there chilling on uh, speakers with her classic little catchphrase, beep boop, bitches. <laughs> it's yeah, the pod- beep boop, bitches. <laughs> it is now the Podchan era of the Newgrounds podcast, and we are super excited Woo! to uh, incorporate Podchan into the culture of NGP. You know, we... We just thought the idea was incredibly cool. Like, we want to um, involve her into our episodes. Um, Like, as you hear in the beginning of the episodes, we have – we already have, like, the pre-recorded messages. We're going to be switching things up a little bit more, get her incorporated into the show. We're going to be doing some audio skits, uh, basically vibing up the culture. uh, Podchan already has a Twitter account. Go search for her on Twitter. Get her added. Uh, she's going to be chatting with you guys, all that good stuff, and just being like encompassing what NGP stands for for the community. It's kind of like our way of linking ourselves officially to like within Newgrounds data or like the code of Newgrounds. <laughs> so, like the lore. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And to talk more about the lore, uh, Red, you have the floor. Tell us how you ultimately came up with Podchan and why you wanted to create this awesome robot well i just designed her on a whim and i thought hey wouldn't it be cool if the podcast had a mascot and so like i added a few little tweaks that were like um inputs from like the community is like oh maybe not have the speaker on her waist maybe have it like on the back like sort of backpack uh messenger bag sort of thing and yeah yeah we everything that you brought to Josh, Zan, and myself was freaking really cool. Like the first time I saw her, I'm like, oh, this is really, this is going to be really cool. This is going to be something that, you know, ultimately changes how we do things on the show. And like I said, we want to incorporate her at the beginning and at the end. Like right now, we have uh, the little pre recorded audio of uh, Will's uh, fiance, Courtney. Uh, but we are going to be altering things. We're going to have her be the new voice that you hear of a uh, new grounds we're gonna have some we want to do some skits where we incorporate her we want her to talk to fellow new grounds characters and idols that you guys know maybe one time she'll be talking to take man uh, the tank man captain and steve she may be talking to pico she could be talking to cassette girl whoever we want her to interview and participate in a conversation with we're gonna do that one of the things that we are gonna do is have an art contest. And let me uh, pull up that information really quick. Zinn is going to be hosting um, an art contest um, in regards to um, our introduction to Podchan. So let me, where is it? Oh, there we go. Drop, here are the rules. And we will make, and we will also post up this information in our announcements, like with an official uh, art contest info. But... Uh, we are going to have a draw podcan uh, a draw podchan art contest. Uh, the best one chosen by the the host and of course uh, Red uh, wins eighty dollars. And the deadline is going to be a week after the block party that we are officially announcing to be on August twenty eighth. And uh, so the deadline for the art contest is going to be September fourth. All right, so a week after uh, we wrap things up with the block party and all you have to do is basically draw a pod chan and it says you can't it says uh, as many sub as many submissions per person as they want so you can draw as many submissions of pod chan as you want uh you can include pod uh include oh it says include pod chan's character sheets 
He says, I, I think the best contest submission will utilize Podchan's lore and personality. So, yo, know, we're going to be doing our best to explain the lore and give you an insight as to who Podchan is and just ultimately what she means to NGP. Um, and Red has been working extremely hard on putting some lore together about her. And like I said, we're going to be having, we're putting together a little introductory skit too, where it's all four of us talking. Uh, Red has ultimately become our intern, <laughs> and we uh, <laughs> and we get met with um, and we we're formally introduced to Pachan. And of course, I'm the last one to know about it because I'm the the dunce of the crew, apparently. So thank you for writing that about me, Red. <laughs> <laughs> but but we are extremely excited and um you know I, I, there's like so much stuff that we've talked about and ultimately we want to uh and this is something that we're going to be extending out to any voice actors listening to the show like i said we want to incorporate podchan into our culture into our episodes as much as we possibly can and we want to have an official voice for Podchan. So aside from having the art contest, we are going to be having a voice acting contest. If you are interested in voicing Podchan, um, feel free and we'll, we'll post up, um, we'll post up some information about the voice acting competition too. Uh, we're going to have you, you can put together any audio submission and we'll put some more rules together, put an audio submission together of what you think Podchan would sound like. Have her doing like a faux interview with, with Tom Fulp, with anyone, any any of the hosts from you know from NGP, or you know just anyone in general, whoever, or just have it be like, you know, Podchan having a good time, being silly, and all that good stuff, and yeah. and whoever we feel best encompasses the culture or just the personality and characteristics of Podchan, you will be chosen as the official voice. And, and just be mindful, um, we're going to have you full-fledged become a part of the team uh, here on NGP. And we may frequently request audio clips from you. Just like, like say we get, you know, say one day we get Tom Fulp, Fulp on again. And, you know, um, we want you to say, you know, and with special guest, Tom Fulp, you know, we'll, we'll have you record um, new audio clips at all times just to keep things fresh and not just the same new uh, same little intro that we have playing at all times. Like this is going to be a full fledged culture change here on NGP, and I'm really pumped to have uh, Podchan be a part of it. So, Red, wh- what? Same. I, say, I know that you have been very, very excited about this. How, how does it feel to have the word finally out, and knowing that your your creation is now a part of this culture of NGP? so surreal and i'm like so glad that the chat already loves her like (laughs) i'm already seeing like a meme of her i'm already seeing like the stickers being thrown into the chat (laughs) freaking pod can it it is so cool and you know i i got really confused um a while back because um was it a slimy was a slimy goo uh posted um an art piece in the art portal a few weeks ago i'm like oh my god who let the word slip who let the word slip about Podchan? You're like, people. some people already know about her. I'm like, oh, okay. So like I said, there's there's some people who already know about Podchan, and we've kind of hinted it over uh, the last couple of weeks, like once we had the idea. And yeah, it's I, I don't – and no one pointed it out, and I don't know if it's just because you guys didn't care or whatnot, but I actually hit her in the announcement – uh, graphic for this week's episode. She's in the bottom right corner, very, very, very small, just because I didn't want to give away what we were announcing. So if you guys did notice that, good on you. And if you're wondering what the hell it was and you zoomed in a thousand percentage just to see what it was to see an extra pixelated character, good on you for putting in the effort. I appreciate you. <laughs> so yeah, we have, um, yeah, we'll post more information about Podchan here um, after the show. Uh, we'll get some formal announcements about the art contest. Um, and we want you to be as creative as you could possibly be. We'll have Zen uh, put together some more information because you know Zen, he loves to um, he loves art pieces to be as extremely creative as they can be. He wants you guys to show off your creative side. And we want to see Podchan in a new light. We want to see her having a great time, no matter what you guys have her doing. And we're excited to hear what voices um, our, our voice actors can potentially uh, provide for for Podchan. And you know what? If if 
something doesn't happen on the voice acting side, then you know what, Red? It's your responsibility. You, you created this madness. It's your responsibility responsibility to voice pod Jen, <laughs> which I would be, oh I, I, I would be, you know, extremely happy with that because like I said, not only is it your creation, but um, it should be, you know, it would, in my opinion, it should be your voice regardless because of, you know, everything that you've already provided. So yeah, it's th- this, I, I'm really excited to see ultimately how you just, just seeing the reception of her already. I, I'm excited to see how it progresses further. And I, I, with some of the ideas that we've already talked about, you you keep constantly putting information in our in our group chat about Podchan. Like, what what are some of the extra concepts that you want to utilize with her um, as we progress further into the future with her on our show? Ooh, um, she can shuffle and she can also break dance. Um, <laughs> she loves to do parkour as well and listen to podcasts. Um, she mains Orange Knight from Castle Crashes, and she also mains Alloy whenever she plays Newgrounds Rumble. I love it. Oh, yeah, she also has um, synesthesia. It actually affects her sense of hearing and her sense of taste, so she can actually taste music. See, it, you you honestly need to dive more into the lore. I've been talking my ass off. You need to say, Corey, shut the hell up. Nobody wants to hear you talk. Let me talk about the lore. Give, give us more lore about her, because... No, no, like, here's the thing, you, you have, you've written so much about her, and like I said, I'm just saying, like, this is so cool, tell us more about her, I want to, like, I know much, much of the lore already, because you've been, you know, sharing it with us, just give more information about her, just so, like, even for the art contest, people know what they, what they can uh, potentially draw when it comes to her, Just, just give us some more lore, give us some more details about her. Okay, uh, she's a robot. She currently lives in NG City, and she's residing in, like, the HQ building of the Newgrounds podcast. Um, but, yeah, we set up, like, a little room for her and everything, and it's really cool. I can't wait for uh, everyone to hear the skit that we're going to put together. <laughs> it's going to be really yeah. cool. I'm so excited. <laughs> Oh hey, there, there's Zin. We got Zin in the chat, but hey, um, I, I'm, I'm really, I'm really excited for this, and I hope that you guys are just as excited as we are about this transition of the culture. And you know, from from Josh, Zin, and myself, Red, we are extremely grateful that you have brought Pachan to NGP, and we're willing to share her with us. Um, you know, Aww, we we've easily, thanks, guys. Yeah, of course, and and you know, we've opened her with open arms, and we have been. You know, full fledged wanting to do this, and I've been anxious as hell to announce this because the minute we came up with this concept, I'm like, uh, yeah, we have to do this. This is really cool. Like, there's so much that we can potentially do with Podchan and just, you know, evolve the culture of NGP. So you're gonna see over these next couple of weeks. Now that we have the word out, we've been planning a lot of stuff. Now that we have the word out, oh yeah. Now it's in like now it's initiating mode. How we just start incorporating all this stuff. So. Um, thank you again, Red. Um, I'm I'm really excited for for what's to come with Podchan, and um, I, I'm I, I just can't wait to see how we progress further with this. Is there is there anything else you want to say, um, about Podchan or just talk about with her, uh, before we switch things on over to talk about the Toy Story Two collab? She also has a Newgrounds account. If you guys want to tag her as inspiration for the art yes, contest, yes, that too. Yes, she she has she has a Newgrounds. She has a Twitter. Like I said, go follow her. Go follow her. Give her the love and support that she you know so rightfully deserves already. <laughs> All right, <laughs> cool. And and Red, you're more stick stick with us. Don't don't leave the show. I want you to stick with us and and chat with us um, as we talk with Wes about the the Toy Story two collab. Like I said, you're part of our family now, so you're stuck with us forever. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. <laughs> You're welcome. All right. So, Wes, it, it's going to be pretty tough for you to follow up uh, something like that. So uh, now you have the pressure back on you, so it's okay for you to pee your pants. Um, <laughs> so if you're still nervous, go Corey ahead. will send you his address. Actually, you know what? I'll, just, I'll, I'll save you some time. I'll save Corey some time. I'll send it to you in the DMs. <laughs> there we um, go. <laughs> make sure you leave it in a plastic bag. He likes it very moist. Ex- yes. The moister, the better. <laughs> Oh, geez. All right. So, Wes, this project that you are putting together is extremely creative, man. And me being um, a Toy Story fan, like I, I've seen all four movies numerous times. You know, that was one of my childhood movies. 
ultimately what made you want to completely reanimate Toy Story 2? Um I'm not uh for Toy Story 2 it was kind of like a an initial like idea so I'm going to have to take you back to tell you the full full story of how I got here so um, do it So I uh one day was just scrolling through YouTube like casually and the Shrek retold trailer I don't know if you've seen that popped up watched the trailer yes. blew my mind watched the whole film pretty much creamed my pants I have never <laughs> I, I never saw anything so like creative so crazy but it was it was so beautiful because it had so many characters and just like I, I grew up with Shrek obviously as a kid I, I think a lot of people same have, yeah have seen Shrek so it was just such a beautiful story and to have some of my favorite uh internet personalities just be a part of it it was just like oh my god I didn't even think this was possible so you know do some digging um find out about more collab projects uh another co favorite collab project of mine was the uh sonic setting scene that was on Newgrounds. that was when i first started up i saw that on the front page i'm like yes this is what i want to do this is what i want to organize so that was the initial idea and then i thought okay can i even do this in the first place so I just wrote a little sketch, um, animation sketch. It was a, it was like a Rick and Morty collab parody kind of <laughs> idea. It's on my new grounds on YouTube if you want to check it out. But uh, you know, it, it it had a few people. I think it was like thirteen people, but it had a mix of everything. So took it was about three minutes long. So I I thought, okay, I finished this. It's uploaded. Now can I do a whole movie? And then that just kind of was on hold until about, say, late April, because I just finished school. The day I finished school is the day I started um, creating Dial-Up Studios, which is the the group that is essentially, right now, is the, uh, the Toy Story 2 um, server on Discord. So, yeah, yeah they um, I, I just started reaching, I obviously first cut up the scenes, and um just reached out to people on Newgrounds to see hey would you be interested in doing a whole shrek uh shrek 2 uh toy story 2 <laughs> collab um because it, it, like i said i i wanted to take the concept of shrek retold just because it was such a groundbreaking film and and i dm'd grant which was the uh collab organizer and i i was just starstruck because he he was like he was like Steve Jobs to me because, you know, he he organized this crazy, <laughs> crazy thing. So Toy Story 2, uh, the idea behind Dial-Up Studios is to take nostalgic films uh, from 1992 to from, sorry, 1992 to 2004, which is like the golden era of um, like animated films. Absolutely. I agree with you on that. <laughs> I wasn't going to say animated films. I was going to say the golden era of oh. dial-up. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. And just take this spirit of uh, of the internet and just apply it to your favorite films. So, uh, yeah, Toy Story 2, obvious fa uh, favorite film. And, um, yeah, I, I messaged out, I reached out to people mostly on Newgrounds to say, hey, would you be down for this? A lot of uh, people either said no or just, didn't reply back but i gotta tell you it was it was at least two and a half months of just grinding every day just messaging people and th these weren't just copy paste messages these are actually like how do i describe this project and you know not make it sound robotic like i i want to obviously yeah. check out your artwork and make sure you're you're um good enough for this for this project but i sent about 1400 emails or messages and email holy cow and That's crazy yeah and there's about 355 uh slots on the film or there are 355 slots for the uh for the project but a lot of people i i was so surprised when so many of my favorite uh personalities reached back to me because it was just like okay here's here's my message you know not expecting you to respond and then a lot of people responded and then so many people from the server are like how did you get um explosion how did you get surreal entertainment how did you get um 
you know, uh, all the, all these cool people. And it's like, oh yeah, I saw you on the Newgrounds. Is why well. I loved your work. It's like, how do you, how do you get these people? It's like people don't understand. They're basing uh, me only on my successes rather than like my entire failures as well. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, that's that's basically from start to finish where this idea came from and where it is at now. Where about almost 100 completed scenes out of 355. Also, I want to give a, a quick shout out to uh, all the people actually from the server listening in right now. And uh, also a big uh, special shout out to Bored to Death because he uh, yes. basically made the icon. But uh, all of you are super, super dear to my heart. Don't get me wrong. I freaking love all of you. I don't know if we can swear. <laughs> but Oh, absolutely. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Well, I, I fucking love all of you guys um, like, <laughs> so much. Like, you have no idea. Because, like I said, it, it, before we were talking, I said, every time I, I log into my computer, it's like Christmas morning. You know, you see one scene that's remade by this person that you love their style for. And it's like, yes, this is going to be a sick sick party and it's it's i really want everybody to watch this movie and feel like this is just a beautiful beautiful project that so many people that i love um have remade in their own style so and and one thing that i i think needs to be emphasized it's it's not a bunch of animators who are just completely reanimating like um like panel to panel what Pixar put together. These animators are reanimating specific scenes, like maybe what, like ten to like the the scenes will range or the the panels will range from ten to thirty seconds, and it's in their own style. It's them reimagining what a scene is like. And um, you know, I, I'm gonna yeah, you know, I'll plug myself because I want to talk about one of the scenes that you shared with me. I, I voice Rex and Stinky Pete in this in this uh collaboration, and I have been having a blast recording for them. And Wes shared with me the other day one of the scenes. Um, it's Rex chasing after the toy car when they're in Al's toy barn, and it's uh, it's dinosaur like overboard, and Rex is Godzilla, and it's freaking hilarious. I laughed my ass off when I saw when I heard my voice coming out of Godzilla running after a toy car. It was hilarious. <laughs> yeah, and and that's 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 one of the the cool things about this collaboration is just the the creativity that all these animators are putting into it. And you're seeing a lot of 2D. You're seeing a lot of 3D. Uh, you're seeing. Have we? Do we have any people actually doing like puppeteer work? Because I could have swore I've saw I saw someone posting a, a whip of yes, um, some puppeteer work. A few people. Uh, Chris Bratt actually did a scene for us. It was the um, the one where like Buzz mon- monologues about uh, trying to f- save uh, Woody, and there's like this whole like globe panning behind him in the background is like. <laughs> so he, so he took it as you know the the, the rat from um, Bear in the Bl- Big Blue House. He's got a whole channel. Um, shout out to him. But yeah, I know he he did a great job. He put an American flag in the background, just things blowing up, and then the the globe actually turns into a, a Mickey Mouse logo, Walt Disney. But um, yeah, no sh- <laughs> shout outs to Chris Bratt. Shout outs to uh, Mr. Bump who actually did that scene, the uh, dinosaur overboard scene. I think he's listening in on that. Uh, on this podcast too so shout outs to him um but yeah no like like you said everyone's doing their own style 2d 3d um live action i'm actually still trying to get um oh my gosh i already forgot it no <laughs> um anything for views <laughs> uh from filthy frank's uh crew i'm still trying to persuade him to do an irl scene but um yeah, no, a couple couple other big uh, internet personalities out there that uh, that I also got to voice. So like Dax Flame uh, is in there. Um, shoot, I'm blanking out now. I gotta pull out the list. Um, EMP Lemon, he did a voice scene. So like a bunch of my nice. favorite favorite YouTubers. I try to get PewDiePie on this. I eventually want to get him. Like I want to go get all the big top YouTubers. You know, Newgrounds. I still want Tom Fult to to do a, a voice acting scene, but I don't know if he can make it for this one. I already reached out to him like twice. I'm like, damn it, man. Uh, I I want you on this, but uh, no, there, there's gonna be more collab films uh for the future this isn't the uh the only project that's going to happen that's going to be a collab film there are definitely going to be more to come so i was going to say like you just announced um on the server the other day 
um, like a tier system for those who participate in what the team is going to be doing here after you know the Toy Story 2 collab releases. Is there? Do you have any idea of what other films you want to, you know, redo once um, you guys are completely finished with Toy Story Two? Yes, I have the next three films in mind, um, but I'm hesitant on t- on um, revealing them. But I, I think, I think it, it it's it would be more uh, suspenseful if uh, if if I re- revealed it. Um, right now so fair enough so the neck fair enough I, I, yeah I, i'm just trying to be i'm just trying to i'm just trying to weasel some information out of you <laughs> that's all yeah no 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 <laughs> totally uh so by the time the toy story 2 collab uh, premieres it's hopefully going to be I'm, I'm aiming it for sometime in october uh so in two months relatively so um by then, production will start on either one or two films at the same time. So the next three films that are coming out are Napoleon Dynamite. Ooh, <laughs> I love it. Road to El Dorado, the animated version. Oh, yes. And Princess Mononoke. We're doing Studio Ghibli. Nice. <laughs> so those are the next films that are coming out. I obviously can't give you um, a frame of time when exactly they're going to be released because i i haven't even cut up the scenes yet but i honestly welcome anybody who's listening anybody who's even thinking about um wanting to to put yourself out there not only as as um put yourself out there in the sense of like posting videos posting artwork posting music even like please come come in if you're not an animator if you you know if you do music, whatever it is, whatever your medium is, send me an email, you know, send me a message on Newgrounds, say, hey, this is what I do. Here's a a quick demo of what I can do or what my work is. And I will respond to it 100%. And hopefully we can work together. But I still need people to um, fill in a few more spots for the Toy Story 2 collab. So there's about nine spots left. So if you are listening, like I said, just send me an email, send me a message, and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll try to make something work. And we'd I'd love to have you on board because more people, the more diverse styles. Like I, I want to be as diverse as possible with these uh, with these styles. So please, beautiful. And are those nine spots tailored to specifically animators, or is that for uh, music, uh, voice actors? I, are, are, what is the, the general consensus for those nine spots, for those, just for those who are listening? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I would say it's it's mainly for animators, but I'm still looking for musicians. Okay. Um, I There's a few songs that are in the works right now for parodies and different styles of songs and, and genres of songs. and. And that's that's the whole kind of theme of this uh, project. It's it's all about experimentation. So if you think your style is is different or it's not good enough, don't bother. Uh, not don't bother. Um, don't have any doubts. Just uh, try it, and you'll be surprised. Sorry, Bones. are you still having the uh, same set deadline, or are you st- are you pushing it back a little bit? Oh no, same set deadline. Okay. Yeah. No. Every every day people drop out, and you know you just hustle and try to find uh, replacements and you just keep going. Like I, I, I don't want to keep pushing the deadline back because the Shrek retold collab took about, I think it's at least a year, more than a year for sure. And they're making a uh, Shrek two retold and there is a SpongeBob SquarePants, the film or the movie retold or rehydrated and SpongeBob one took about two years and I'm trying to get this done in six months because I don't want to technically push anybody, but like the faster, the, the faster things get done, the, the more frequent um, content we can put out there. And I feel like everybody has their own scene and everybody can be working at the same time. This isn't a normal film where you have actors on, on set and you have to film chronologically, right? You, you need a certain amount yeah. of time yeah. to get things done where it's like you have a bunch of people working at the exact same time. And it's like, why is this taking two years to make, you know, like people, I, f- I feel like it's just, it, there's too many deadlines or there's not enough deadlines. So 
there uh, there needs to be some deadlines put in. But um, I have had a lot of people drop out for various reasons, and I'm telling people from the start, <laughs> I'm not paying anybody for this. This is all voluntary. Work, school, you know, your personal life, all that comes before this project. So. I, I tell everybody who drops out, don't worry about it. You know, life happens. It, that's that's just the way the world works. You know, that's just the nature of of the of the um, of this project. So, yeah, no, you just find somebody uh, to fill their shoes, and yeah, still still so on, going. On the on the, on that note, um, do you have like so? It seems like you're. I would say after this, you're pretty experienced with collabs. Do you have any sort of advice for anyone who's looking to start up their uh, collab of their own? Um, I would say just keep being active. There are way too many collab projects out there that are either stuck in limbo or have just failed. So there was, there's a collab right now. It's for the Monsters Inc. Uh, film. That one's kind of stuck in limbo. Um, there is a Wally collab. I think it, it just got rebooted, but it was inactive for an entire year. So it it just frustrates me so much to see animators, musicians, um, background artists, like everybody put in their hard work into making their own scene and just not having the whole project complete. It's like you put in your time. Now it's your job as a collab anime or collab organizer to finish the damn thing. Like you got to press through it. You got to, figure out a way you got to be creative you know you, you you can't just oh okay well that sucks he's gone i really liked him it's like no you gotta get off off your ass and just find somebody else to, to to take their spot you know somebody better even so that's my uh that's my it, advice yeah and, and i would say that that's usually one of the downsides of so, like any type of collaboration is just trying to keep people active like i know um, you know, I, I, I orchestrate the voice acting collaboration and, you know, we, we get a lot of inactive voice actors. They, they will answer like, yeah, this is so cool. Like I want to do this. And then, you know, you never hear from them again. So it, I, I feel you on that. Like you, you just have to keep moving forward and you have to try to keep, you know, bringing in people that are willing to participate and make, make whatever you're doing and whatever you're trying to accomplish, mm-hmm. you know, happen. Yeah. Because if you're not doing that, then it's just going to become stagnant. And then you're going to be missing deadlines, and then you're going to be postponing uh, the official release, which is what I did for my first, uh, like for the first edition of the <laughs> voice acting collaboration. I just kept pushing the deadline. Right. So it's it's nice having you know like minded individuals who just want to keep pushing the the content out there, and you know helping everyone achieve something that like achieve something that's going to be extraordinary. Mm-hmm. Like uh, there, there's no doubt that this this is going to be really freaking cool. Just just from just from what I've seen from all the works in progress, whether it's a finished scene or even if it's just a, a storyboard or or just sketches of the scenes, we have some amazing scenes being put together, and it's not going to fall short of entertaining people. If you are not entertained, then we are sorry, and we will, you know, I guess start over. Yeah. <laughs> Unless Wes says, no, we're not doing that. We're moving to the next one. Shut up, Corey. <laughs> yeah. Now we're gonna do a uh, a remake of this remake. So yeah. <laughs> now I I know you said uh, Toy Story two was one of your favorite movies growing up, but ultimately you know I, I'm sure you have a bunch of ton like a, a bunch of other uh, movies from your childhood that uh, you you love dearly. So why specifically did you go with Toy Story two um, to reanimate? Um. I, I just grew up watching it like a lot of Pixar and Disney movies, like most kids born in the nineties. Um, it, it just stuck out to me a bit more than other animated films it, in the sense that almost everybody has heard of toy story. Almost everybody has seen it. So I figure, okay, this would be a, a great audience to tap into, but also the fact that I freaking watched that movie at least like a dozen times. I got a Buzz Lightyear for Christmas one year. It's just like, it, it just, I just want to bring some of that uh, energy back into um, 
into the people growing up with the film or have seen the film and and want to re-experience it but don't have a, a reason to do it it's like with all these films too uh napoleon dynamite uh road to el dorado princess mononoke like i grew up watching these films and i i don't want i know i kind of sound like a boomer but i don't want the next generation uh to not experience these these films in all their glory even though they're pop culture classics i get it but it's like to have um a, a, just a remake of something that you love and cherish so much and and to do it in almost like the ultimate tribute way of having the whole thing redone by some of your favorite you know artists and in different styles you didn't even think were possible like that is just the true true uh, tribute to uh, to everybody who made Toy Story 2 and to uh, everyone who loves it and shares it. So, Yeah, I, I, I agree with you on that. You, I would say two of the movies I watch constantly like from Pixar in, you know, in my youth was either Monsters, Inc. or Toy Story 2. Mm -hmm. So when the announcement for the collab, it was dropped – by one of our voice actors. I think it was um, at that point, Lucky D. He was mm -hmm. one of the only voice actors in our group who knew about the project. He goes, hey, dropped it in our promotion channel, and hey, there's this collaboration. They are completely reanimating Toy Story 2. I'm like, what? <laughs> like, I want in on that. And it is basically just like you said. It was a movie that you watched numerous times that you absolutely loved. And, you know, this would be, like, I, I feel extremely blessed and honored to even be you know, not one, but two characters in it. <laughs> you know, I, I feel like I get to at least leave my imprint and kind of give like a, a nice little tip of the cap to, you know, the Pixar crew for you know putting a, an awesome movie together. So yeah, yeah I, I, I'm 100% with you on that. That's, it's, it's really cool. That's one of the aspects that I love about the collaboration. Like you said, Wes, you reached out to, you sent out 1400 messages to animators, to, you know, voice actors, to musicians just to see if they'd want to be a part of this you're presenting opportunity to, to people to be a part of something that's going to be really cool and whether you're an experienced animator an experienced composer or say you're just getting into voice acting this is an opportunity for you to try your craft and it's you know you're going to be around a bunch of you know extremely creative people who are probably willing to help you out with your scene to help you out with the tune you're putting together and just help you grow in your craft. And from what I've seen through everyone interacting in the server, it's very supportive. Everyone is extremely cool with one one another, and they support one another. Like you see everyone posting their works in progress, and you see um, fellow animators like, holy cow, that is really cool. I love what you did there. This is really cool. Maybe you can do that. It will help with, uh, like... Um, you know, when Woody's turning his head, if you do it this way, you know, that can help even more. Oh yeah, that's a great idea. Like you have a lot of people supporting each other and you know, that's what I love. That's one of the aspects that I really love about this collaboration is the, the community aspect of it. Just everyone helping each other out. It's really cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it, it definitely reminds me of the, uh, the new grounds, uh, portal feedback days, but, um, <laughs> it, yeah, uh, yeah. It's um yeah no like the, the server has just been really really phenomenal in, in terms of uh in terms of works in progress like you said everyone's supporting each other which is great and um yeah no it's 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 funny just to kind of see some people like freak out when uh one of their favorite animators gets involved and then they can just immediately just get in touch it's just like how did you do that like oh I love that video you made and uh yeah, no, it, it's uh, it's a really tight knit community, and and I freaking love it, and I, I I seriously am nothing without them. Don't get me wrong, like I I am just organizing this thing. So if it weren't for every single person submitting their scenes, uh, this project would not be possible. So that's that's actually a, a, something I was gonna stem into. So most uh, collab projects, whether it be like videos or films they'll have like a spreadsheet and maybe like a quick set of credits. So I want to do that. Plus I will also want to uh, set up a website. I'm in the early stages of that, but it's going to be dialupstudios.com and you're going to be able to watch all the films that we recreate in a few different languages. Also, you're going to have a more uncensored version, whereas YouTube is, you know, 
they've got a bunch of sticks up their asses and you can't really <laughs> yep. do a whole lot. But um, all that is going to be uncensored. It's going to be up there. And also everyone's going to have their own um, personality or a, like profile. So this isn't like a social community, uh, a social network community. Everyone just has their own profile. You can click on it, see what projects they've worked on in terms of the, uh, the featured films, the films that we remake as well as their socials. So if you want to get in, in touch with them, um, you know, maybe if you're a, if you're a fan, follow them. If you're a, um, if you're somebody who's looking to hire them, you can, you know, get in touch with them. So I don't want to just, um, put their names in the credits. I actually want to propel them and say, look, you're not going to be here working for free for the rest of your life. I want your career to excel. Here is you know, a way to do it. So it's going to be up on there. I love that. That That's really cool. And you don't see a lot of people doing that. So that that's really cool of you to do that. You know, th there's another reason why this is an awesome community to be a part of. You know, you have the creator of this awesome collaboration trying to help out those who are helping him out, you know, excel further in their career. So that's really cool. I like that. Thanks, man. Now, one one of the things I kind of want to touch on really quick is um, kind of like on the legal aspect aspects of things. Like I, I know mm -hmm. this kind of falls on parody some of some sorts, be, just because it's not verbatim. Um, you know, a completely just you know us copy pasting scenes from Toy Story and you know trying to promote it and get money off of it. Mm -hmm. Are you nervous at all about Disney or Pixar? seeing this potentially seeing this and saying uh take it down yeah no totally for sure uh honestly i'm i'm expecting like a cease and desist letter as soon as this things goes up but i want to make this crystal clear this is a parody okay this is a yeah. original work okay all of the visuals all of the audio all of the everything is original okay but in terms of um, monetary gain, I am not making a cent from this project. In terms of monetization, um, I don't. I was really hesitant, and I still am, about posting this film to YouTube because their new policy, I think it was updated in June, where you don't even have to be a YouTube partner. YouTube can just put ads on your video and you don't see anything. So... At that point, I was like, okay, I'm giving, you know, YouTube a little credit, you know, they're, they're a business, they got to make money somehow. But then with this, you know, this, this just totally just stabs every single creator in the heart, like small time, big, big time. Um, it, it, it's just so, so insane to me to, uh, to have this company that I loved for, for so many years, just turn their backs on, on their creators. It's, it's ridiculous. So I'm still hesitant about posting the movie to YouTube, but I will definitely be posting it to Newgrounds, to Vimeo, and you can watch it for free. Um, obviously, if you're if you're on Newgrounds, I highly recommend you become a, a supporter because you know you, you pay annually and it's like you forget about it. Um, yeah, <laughs> but uh, yeah, no. In in terms of of watching it, you don't have to pay a movie ticket. You can watch it for free, and I will be setting up a Patreon for the creators uh tier rewards which i am still in the works for but i don't want to take any money from the patreon all of the money will go straight to the rewards or the rest will go to charity but for that aspect um i'm not here to make money i'm just here to you know bring nostalgia back so i feel you and i honestly think that you would be okay considering it is parody it's all original content from the animators. Like I said, they're not just taking the original models from Pixar and doing it their own way. You have you have original voice actors, you know, doing their own portrayals or impressions of uh, the voice actors who originally voiced the characters. Um, and I'm pretty sure the music's going to be slightly different, just to make sure you don't get any copyright strike, mm -hmm. strikes on that aspect. Yep. And I I did not know that about YouTube, how they changed their policy to incorporate ads on every single video now, and yeah, it's really lame. It, it it just goes to show how how shitty YouTube pretty much is turning into. It it really sucks because yeah, it it does hurt people for for this type of project. 
where we don't want any monetary compensation compensation because of what it is, and that can o- I, as soon as we get a penny, Disney can step in and say, "Uh, uh-uh, uh, you're not doing that because now you're earning money off of something that we created," and you would really hope that YouTube says, "Hey." They don't have they they're not looking to take compensation. We're just trying to get compensation from, you know, ad revenue. That that's what we're trying to do here. But, you know, YouTube's also shitty and they'll probably try to throw content creators under the bus. Mm-hmm. So uh, I, I honestly think we'll be okay though. Because and and a good example of that is um the SpongeBob anime. And was it by was a Nar Narmak or Narmark who um uh put this beautiful uh this beautiful animation together of SpongeBob fighting Bubble Bass. Mm -hmm. And I'm pretty sure you guys have seen it completely amazing. And I don't think, and and he did just, you know, as a fan, it was a parody and YouTube took it down and people were, went ballistic. And, um, right away they say, put like, put it up on new grounds, put it up on new grounds, put it up on new grounds. And, you know, even Tom said, Hey, put it up on new grounds. You know, you have a place here. And, Put it up on Newgrounds, and it blew up, and everyone just showed it the love and support that it desired, and it's still up to this day. And I feel it would be the same thing if YouTube steps in and they say, eh, we, we got to take this down because Disney is you know, putting a gun to our head. <laughs> um, yeah, it'll be up on Newgrounds, and you'll it'll easily get the support, uh, mainly because of all the, the Newgrounds heads that are you know participating in this. And, yeah, it's I'm excited just to see you know how everything turns out. Like I said, the, the works in progress are just mind blowing about how cool it is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Let's see. How about you? Do you, uh, Ben? Do you have any uh, questions? Or Red? Do you guys have any questions for Wes? Pick his brain a oh, little bit. Uh, a little bit off topic in the term, uh, but I'm just curious about for, like your overall inspiration for coming on Newgrounds, and um, cause I, I noticed you do a little bit of animations, and what got you interested in doing a uh, 2D animation? Um. Well, in terms of the animation aspect, I, I've always just been fantasized by by animation. Um, I think when I was a kid, I wanted to be an animator so bad, but I didn't really know the tools or how to get started. And um, yeah, just just kind of picked up the ho- uh, the hobby of animating uh, like short little videos on the side for for a little bit. But then I just realized, you know, I I have a I have a certain aesthetic, I guess you could say, but at the same time, I, I don't feel like my videos are going to really pick up and I don't feel as inspired right now uh, to keep pursuing that revenue, uh, that avenue. And um, no, like like I said, um, Shrek Retold and I'd say this this movie on, on YouTube, you can find it. Uh, they just made a sequel, actually. It's called uh, Life in a Day where they just had a bunch of bunch of people from around the world basically just submitted uh, their clips of their day um, on one day. And they just kind of, uh, I think it was Ridley Scott, the guy who did uh, the Alien movie. He uh, yeah. directed it. And yeah, it's, it's a really cool day. It's a really cool film from basically like morning to end of of just people like collaborating. And, you know, they, they don't know what the hell the movie is going to look like. It's like you just throw your, throw your video or throw your day on... Um, in a in a website and then you know you just a few few years i think it was a year later it's like yeah comes out this awesome movie so similar to those two films like those two really sprung me into uh into this project so yeah i i'm i'm not planning on slowing down anytime soon when this uh when toy story 2 comes out obviously i i want to make at least 10 films um at least before I kind of pass on the torch to somebody else, because I, I don't want to do this for, um, for free for the rest of my life. So hopefully <laughs> some, some network will pick me up and, uh, hopefully I can bring, uh, a large percentage of the, uh, the animators and voice actors and, and just people working on the project to help me with, uh, with an actual, you know, paid, paid gig. So, um, it would be cool to see, you know, recreations or just original stories in like a collab style on like uh, like a Netflix original show or on Adult Swim. Maybe I'll say hi to Michael Cusack. You know, like I I want to I want to <laughs> branch out more. So. And, and that's 
I think that's a good uh, a topic to kind of branch off on. Yeah, you know, you say you want to do at least ten, uh, ten movies altogether, uh, before you pass the torch. And I know you've been going full fledged, and you've been going, you you've been working really hard and being dedicated, and you know, staying on top of people. What is what is one thing that you do for yourself to prevent yourself from, you know, experiencing burnout? Because you know. A lot of us who go extremely hard on trying to just, you know, you know, get as much as we possibly can done in a certain amount of day, just over a period of time, we all experience burnout in some sort of way. I know I have. So, what what are some things that you do to prevent yourself from having that burnout experience? Um, I'd probably say just taking long walks. Uh, yeah, just yeah, so you just need to take breaks throughout the day from the project or whatever project you're working on and just kind of think to yourself and um yeah usually some of the my idea most of my ideas actually just come from walks and just listening to music like this this project you know just came to me one day when i was out for a walk and then the idea of oh okay future projects you know like just uh taking breaks because all artists we (laughs) we need to take uh take some time away from from the the art and just kind of let let our brains rest before we have a an I guess a, an art block. But in my case, I'm just I'm just a little uh, stressed out from from organizing. But don't don't get me wrong, I, I freaking love this project and uh, I I'm I'm not stopping. I'm not slowing down. And um, yeah, that that's uh, <laughs> that's that's one thing that I do to to prevent burnouts is just taking breaks and um. I don't know, maybe maybe by the third film, if I kind of just like snap one day and just be like, okay, I'm done. That's it. No more. Uh, I'm passing on the torch. It's like, I, 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 I don't. Like, are you going to do it like half fake style where you're just like, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. You're cool. And fuck you, I'm out. And just throw the hamburger at like an old lady. Yeah, no, no I, 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 definitely not like that, but <laughs> probably just. <laughs> probably just uh <laughs> just just stop and 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 take a take a long long nap i mean there there was this uh, what's his name um bill Wirtz. he was on the h3 h3 podcast oh, i don't know yeah. you, do you guys know who bill Wirtz is I know bill Wirtz. I know. yeah yes he's the guy who did the um history of japan video and the um i think the, the history, history of everything history of the universe the history of of the universe uh i guess but he he was talking about his production style and how it took him like I think a year to just get the uh, history of everything video done and he he was having a hard time mentally at one point because he he would just go through a like a month of just you know hardcore production like getting things done and then just realizing like oh my god I still have so much work to do and he's he's a perfectionist so he said it would have taken him years to get the video out so he said i just have to kick my ass and just get this thing done and just forget about it and supposedly he said on the podcast once he posted that video he just never watched it again but he knows how successful it's become and he he kind of like shrugs it off like his friend messaged him one day he's like yeah this video i think is like number two of all time on reddit and he's like oh okay that's that's pretty good that's good to know (laughs) so I don't know. I, I kind of feel a bit like that in the sense of, you know, get get a lot of work done um, within the span of a few weeks. And then I'm just like, oh, my God, there's still so much work left to be done. And I just kind of kind of have a hard time, you know, getting out of bed and just just <laughs> just <laughs> saying to myself, OK, you need to get shit done. I totally know what you mean. Mm-hmm. That, that Like, especially with law, if you overscope something. Mm-hmm. the more like you start to realize that as you're working on it you're like oh fuck dude this is gonna take so long mm-hmm. maybe i should just give up <laughs> yeah no you can't can't give up on a project like this i got too many people involved i i said the the first i think grant mentioned it he the grants the guy who did the uh directed uh shrek retold for if you forgot but um he said the the first message or email you send to that first person that means you're locked into this collab like you cannot give up like you need to just get it done get it done so shout outs to uh Grant Dufferin on uh, 3GI that's a good concept right there and and that's that's a good um ideology to you know abide by once you send out the word 
you get it out there, you have to stick with it until you're done. You know, it, you know, it, there's plenty of, you know, failed projects out there. And, you know, I, I've always felt extremely accomplished when, you know, a project you've worked really hard on comes out and you're like, hell yeah, it, it's, it's a nice little wave of euphoria seeing something that you work so hard on, you know, come out and, you know, just seeing the end result. So that, that's some good advice. That's some good advice for him. Absolutely. And then, uh, let's see, have you ever come across, you know, based off of how many people you have working in this collab and some of the bigger name people that you never thought possible would, you know, potentially help you out with this. Have you ever come across any, some sort of imposter syndrome where you're like, uh, I don't, I don't deserve these people's help. Like, I, I don't know why they want to participate in this. Like, this is, you know, this is a stupid idea. Maybe I should give up. Like, have you ever had those thoughts of imposter, imposter syndrome where you're just like, I can't, I don't, I, I shouldn't be doing this whatsoever. <laughs> um, you, you mean, uh, people trying to like sabotage the, uh, the project? Not, not necessarily like other people, but just like yourself. Like, have you ever, like, I don't understand why people would want to help me. Like, you know, you, you go full fledged and you hit those moments where you're just like, okay, yeah, this is really stupid. I, I shouldn't be doing this. I should shut it down. Like, have you ever had those moments? I, I know we just said, <laughs> you know, once you, once you send out the first email, it's full fledged and you go until, until you stop. But have you had those moments where you just thought to yourself, I don't know why people are, are interested in helping me. This is stupid. Maybe I should just stop. Nah, like this is a, this is a super unique project and, and I I see so much motivation from from everybody, and everybody's feeding each off of everyone. Uh, feeding each, uh, everyone's feeding off <laughs> everyone else. <laughs> Jesus, I can't talk. Uh, <laughs> but no, like it, it's just keeping the train going. Like I'm the captain of the ship in this in this project. Like I go down with the ship. I'm I'm not quitting. I'm not hopping off. Um, this is a good idea. If it fails, it fails. Great. Then, you know, I take those, I've learned already so much from this project that I'm taking into the next project. So like, it's just lessons on lessons and it's like, okay, how to, you know, properly manage, um, a large group of people who are all super, super talented. It's like, okay, you just, you know, keep, keep everybody, um, motivated, keep everyone like on par like like i said the whips kind of just they do the work for themselves like it, it motivates other people to see other people's work like it, I, I don't really need Definitely. to do much in terms of that aspect but just keeping in touch with people saying hey how's how's it going like has your scene coming along if it hasn't come in already um like it, what, what do you need from me anything so um no just just trying to trying to keep the train going trying to keep everything going and uh it, honestly if this when this or not if this when this project um goes up in october it's it's going to be uh it's going to be an accomplishment it's it's six months to make uh, an entire film so that'll be uh that'll be something that i can smoke yeah. a cigar too so. absolutely <laughs> <laughs> good glass of brandy and a nice cigar to smoke absolutely exactly um <laughs> I'm a tequila sunrise chick myself. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Now, do do you have any other questions, Red or or Benny? Because I feel we're at a, a good point to kind of wrap yeah. things up. But if you, do you, do you guys have any other questions that you want to ask Wes before we wrap things up for the night? Uh no, I'm all, I, um, all set. Nothing I can think of. All right, cool. Hey, you so, kind of uh, just ran through all my questions I wrote down right at the beginning, like one <laughs> after another after another, and I was Damn. like looking at my list. I was like, "Fuck, dude, I don't have anything to ask." <laughs> They would say, Corey, shut the fuck up. Let me co-host. Let me ask questions. <laughs> 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 well, I, I do have one more question uh, before we wrap things up for the night here on NGP. And and this is just, this is just tailored. Um, this is something I like to ask every single guest. I think I started doing this when we had Rice Pirate on. Um, and it was basically for anyone who participates on Newgrounds. You know, and those who are just starting out, whether they're an animator, a game developer, an illustrator, um, a voice actor, composer, whatever craft that they're they are working on, what advice would you give them in order to give them confidence 
and um, encourage them to continue doing what they're doing? Um, I'd probably just say, you know, take the route that's, you know, less commonly taken. I mean, you, you see, for example, uh, Ego Raptor, like he came in to Newgrounds and he pretty much rocked the, the website. Everyone took so much inspiration from him and have yeah. a successful career. Like Ego Raptor, Ego Raptor has a successful career, but now it's just like so many people look at his videos and look at Oni's videos and look at, um, rice pirates videos and 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 so many great animators and they say oh i want to do that and it's like sure you can do that but it's already been done before and it's already been it's going to be uh it's people are still going to uh try and recreate their styles it's like try to do a different style that is completely insane completely different if you think it's uh, if if you think it's going to fail let it fail you're going to learn something regardless but if it doesn't fail and it's it's successful, put it out there online. See what people say. See you know what criticisms they take. You know, have um, be humble enough to accept their criticism. Um, but you know, just just experiment. That's this this whole collaboration is all about experimentation. And people, you, okay, <laughs> I'm gonna pull out this example. But for example, <laughs> uh, like superhero movies. Before they were just like kind of like a, a niche um, audience. Before it was for like comic book lovers, like the old Batman movies and the early Spider Man movies. But now it's worth billions of dollars, right? It no one took yeah. them seriously at first, you know. But it had heart. It had a lot of relatable characteristics. And I feel like collab films are the next big thing that is going to rock Hollywood in terms of okay. We've run out of ideas, guys. How do we, you know, bring back nostalgia? We've done every single live CG version of The Lion King, of you know, Beauty and the Beast, like every single classic <laughs> Disney movie. How else do we do it? You know, and it's like, oh wait, we can do collab film for uh, collab film styles. So, um, I think we are in the early stages of a collab uh, film gold rush where everyone is going to try to maybe recreate their favorite films. And I just want to uh, do a really, really good job, make sure the job gets done first off, and then um, hopefully propel people's careers from there. I love that, man. And you do make a good point. You know, everyone is reanimating everything out there. And it's just like, I feel the more they try to re reanimate or do live actions of just other movies, it, it, they're starting to fall a little bit more flat mm -hmm. and that's yeah you, know, you know i feel the more the more creative things are going to be the more it's going to gain a following so hopefully this is the the trend that you know you'd want to you know see go forward you know collaboration projects being the next big thing to hit the entertainment industry yeah, right. and right. shoot you can you can only hope that it really does happen right. and you know like what's what's just said don't be afraid to fail guys don't be afraid to fail because it can lead to something great, um, regardless if it's a failure or a success. Because even if you do fail, you can learn from your failures and go on to succeed, you know, way more than you did the first time you attempted something. So great advice. And, you know, I and being a part of the project for, you know, for the collab, I can't wait to see how it comes out and I can't wait to see how everyone responds to it. You know, I'm just I'm just as excited about it as you, buddy. And. You know, it, it's gonna be it's gonna be really cool to you know get it finally released and you know to see it pop off. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm really excited for it, and uh, I I look forward to the day where I can go to the movie theater, pay for a ticket for a collab film one day instead of the uh, the new I don't know <laughs> uh, the new live version of uh, the Avengers films. But um, yeah, don't, <laughs> don't get me wrong, it's still great movies, but um. Yeah, we, we, we need uh we need more experimental styles out there and uh yeah, I, I just wanna scream it from the rooftops like, hey, if you don't think it's gonna work, just try it regardless. So I feel you. Well, guys, I, I think this is the perfect time to end the episode. Wes, thank you so much for jumping on the podcast. Um, you know, when I presented the idea, you were all for it. And I'm really glad that you were able to make time out of your schedule 
to jump on and promote this beautiful this beautiful project. So thank you for for coming on, buddy. I do appreciate it. Yeah, thank thank you so much, man. And uh, I really appreciate all the uh, all the bullet. I can't even talk. I was gonna say BS, <laughs> and then I was about to say bullshit at the same time. So uh, no. <laughs> thanks for dealing with all the uh the bullshit demands that i've been uh, asking you for in terms of the audio and and timing but uh no you handled it like a champ all the uh, voice actors are friggin killing it and uh i i am i'm also really really excited to see how this project turns out and uh yeah like i said there's still nine spots available and there's probably going to be a few more people dropping out it's just the name of the game but um, yeah, now if you are interested in the project, just reach out to me. I'm on Newgrounds. I'm on uh, YouTube. Uh, you can send me an email. Just Google uh, Dial Up Studios. It should be there. Or uh, just search my name. And uh, yeah, just get in touch with me and we'll, uh, we'll see what we can do. We'll make something happen. Hell yeah. Definitely, be, definitely take advantage of that opportunity. Reach out to Wes as soon as you possibly can. Go and message him right now and see if you can get your foot in the door for this awesome project. And before we leave, Red. Yeah. Are you still are you still excited Woo! about Pod Chan? <laughs> there we go. <laughs> we we um we are super ex- like like I said earlier, we were super excited about having Pod Chan um, as a member of our family and we are extremely fortunate to have Red as a part of our family. Um, again, thank you for jumping on the show tonight and, you know, bringing Podchan into our lives and, you know, helping me make this announcement Aww. official. I'm excited to see what the future has in store for us. Thanks, guys. I am really thankful that I got the opportunity to work with you guys and, you know, share my vision with, like, what I think would be awesome for the podcast. And And all the ideas that you've presented so far have been amazing and it you know with our little chat you know we'll be you know josh zinn and i will be quiet because you know we're old men and we have normal day responsibilities that take up all of our time but i'll come back to maybe like 20 messages from reg saying we can do this 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 is really cool and i read through them all like fuck all of these ideas are really freaking cool so just as now that we have pod chan as a part of the NGP culture, you know, just be ready for some really kick-ass stuff to come your way. Like I said, as of right now, we have started the art contest. We're going to have um, more rules and guidelines probably listed tomorrow or at the start of the new week. Same thing with our voice acting contest. Um, we're going to try to incorporate uh, Pachan into the summer block party. Um, which is August 28th. I'm pretty sure I said that at the beginning, but just to reiterate, we have our block party August 28th. We're going to have games. Um, we're going to have music playing all day. Um, we're going to have an uh, exclusive uh, Jackbox game session with some Newgrounds legends hosted by Cycle Goldfish. You're not going to want to miss that. Uh, we're going to have the official announcement soon, uh, like a graphic uh announcement and you're going to hear all about who's going to be participating in that exclusive Jackbox session. Um, I'm going to be closing out the night with an improv night. So we're going to invite people from the community to come on and play some improv games with us because we had a blast doing that um, when we had the improv night on NGP. So we're going to do that and uh, we're going to finish the night with a screening of, I believe, Team America. So (laughs) it's going to be a fun-filled night and uh, we're looking forward to it. And uh, Ben, thank you for jumping on again, buddy, and um, no helping problem. us co-host. I will be on. It, it's it's always good hearing your your luscious voice in on the episodes. <laughs> so thank thank you for um, you know I know we we took some time away from you and you know spending time with your family. So thanks for giving no, us some fine. some some light of the day to uh, you know fulfill our needs. So you can go back to your family and uh, yeah. not be non-existent to them. <laughs> <laughs> I've been getting text messages like, are you done yet? <laughs> Say, no! We're almost, we're almost there. We're almost there. <laughs> well, all right. all right, guys. Thank you so much for joining tonight's episode. We hope you enjoyed it. And um, I hope you guys are excited for the future as much as we are. So thank you and good night, everyone.
Thank you for listening to the New Grounds podcast. This show is recorded live on our Discord server. Join us at bit.ly slash NGP Discord. For the latest news, follow us on Twitter at the NG Podcast. Thank you to Waterflame for the use of his song, Gabberfly. Goodbye. <laughs>